switch panels on, and this fuel tank button should turn both of them on. Pop the fuse. Okay. <laughs> What's up people, we're back. It is Memorial Day today and there is just a week and a half left until the car's gotta leave for Reese week. And today I'm working on the car, getting a few things ready because in a couple days I have to test this thing. I'm gonna show you some progress that we've made so far and some things that I'm gonna be doing today. I have ran a wiring harness for the fuel pumps that are mounted up here on the race tank. I got my catch can plumbed for one side. I still need to plumb the other side. Moving forward, we got a radiator and a big fan. The fan that I got is from Be Cool. It's got 3000 CFM on one 16 inch fan. This thing blows some serious air. I got some more wiring buttoned up in here. It doesn't look beautiful, but hey, as long as it works, I just know that one of my breakdowns on race week is gonna be an electrical issue. So I am preparing myself. I know that's what I need to pack. I'm just calling it now, but hey as long as i'm prepared hopefully nothing happens over prepare and you know the worst comes to worst we got to rewire some stuff and we'll be ready if that's all it is and i'm gonna be freaking pumped because <laughs> from what i hear i should be expecting a lot worse all right so here's the back of the car we got the street tank plumbed and wired up i still need to run my return for the fuel the water tank is pretty much plumbed up. I need one more dash 12 and fitting to run one of the, the return hose on the intercooler. And walking around the car, oh, I do need to get taillights set up because right now the, well, the taillights are set up, but the brake light doesn't work. When the car was gutted before, I think he pulled the wiring out of it, but that's okay. I got a bracket for the seat coming because I got to get that mounted before we test. So I feel like in the beginning, this seemed like five big things we needed to fix, which didn't seem like a lot. But then when you start diving into it, it's just so much more. There's like a thousand other little things that need to be buttoned up, but we're making some serious progress on this thing. And uh, like I've said, the only way to learn is by doing this stuff. All right, so right now I'm gonna get started on heat shielding the exhaust. What the instructions say is to zip tie it on one end before using the metal ties, so I'm gonna do that. Also says to dampen it with water. Here's my exhaust. Right now it mounts to the turbo and comes right out the exhaust, or right out the bumper right here. So I have some wiring for the headlight and turn signals that I need to get tightened up. Right now it's too tight and we're going from like a 20 gauge wire to a 12 gauge wire, so the butt connector is really loose. It's already come apart once just sitting here, so I know it's not secure. And right now the wires are too tight in the harness that I ran, so I just gotta, I just gotta tighten it up and, and fix it. But that's nothing, it's really no big deal. Still need to get these waste gates plumbed. That's a little bit above my pay grade. I'm gonna wait for James or Ty to be here before we hook that up because I really don't know how to do that and I wanna make sure it's right. We still need to run the, oh, we got the oil to the turbo. We still need to run the return but that's no biggie. Here's the wire. Here it is right here. Nope, that's not it. That is it. Cool, that's it. All right, so come tag along. Oh, since the Holly High Ram is so high up, the wiring harness that's on the motor right now doesn't reach for the IAC and the throttle position sensor. So I need to extend those two. Everything else reaches just fine. But when I try to bring this up, I mean, there's a good six inches of length that I need to add to those wires just to do it right. I don't want any of the wires super tight. Something will go loose. Like I said, I'm kind of anticipating we're gonna have some kind of electrical issue on this car and I'm gonna be prepared for that. But for now, I'm just gonna get it buttoned down as tight as I think it needs to be for at least testing the car because right now my plan was to run an eighth mile class, but now we're leaning towards unlimited and just having fun and still being competitive. I mean, the, there's no reason the car shouldn't run nine. So, all right, let's get to work. Shield wrapping. 
I've never done this before, but hey, like I've said before, the only way to learn is by doing it. So come follow along. I'll show you guys what I learned. I'm sure gonna screw this up. I know it's not easy, but I, I really gotta try it. It says in the instructions, the best way to do this is to use some zip ties to hold it down on one end and then use these metal ties. Once you get things moving, uh, a pro tip that they said was to get this damp with water before putting it on. And then after I have this silicone spray to seal it up. All right, I'm gonna try this. No guarantees, I know this isn't gonna go well, but like I, I just gotta try it. I, I wanna learn how to do this stuff. So, all right, let me find some water and we'll get rolling. I've never used, it came with this nifty little tool. It has a little slot in the end on a quarter inch ratchet. I'm pretty sure what you do is you put it through here and then start cranking it to tighten the, the tie. I love little tools like this. I didn't read the instructions, but uh, I'll figure it out. I like little stuff like this. I'm pretty sure you just put it on here in the slot. <laughs> Unreal. Look at that beaut. Get some more metal ties on here. All right, check it out. Not too bad for my first time, I gotta say. All right, so this kit, DEI exhaust strap kit, I bought 100 feet thinking I need it all. I really only needed about 50 feet. I'm waiting for it to dry from the water I put on there and then I'm gonna put some silicone on it and then put her back in and that's it for that project. Now I need to work on some wiring in the car. So let's do that. All right, so this uh, high temp silicone coating, it basically goes on like black spray paint and that thing looks freaking clean. I still have to get the backside of it. See his little tacky still? Yeah, good enough. All right, give her the old rattle rattle. that sit for about 20 30 minutes i'll put her back on the car all right as i'm extending the wiring on the car so i get a little more reach for the headlights and the iac and the tps i'm going to show you a little trick that my dad taught me a long time ago when we were rewiring some christmas lights that a squirrel chewed through back in nebraska is you always hold your butt connector like this when you're ready. That way you're not trying to twist or put the butt connector on the wire first and then reach for your pliers. If you put it on your pliers first and then you feed your wires into your butt connector, it's a lot easier than trying to do it the other way around and reach for things and make it difficult on yourself. So, just like that, I pretty much have the headlights wired up and out of the exhaust get it interfering with the exhaust because it was way too close before and if I would have definitely been burning through the wire and I didn't want to be driving without headlights or have them shut off and have to pull over and try and fix it in the middle of a run between cities so just like that I got these together these are the heat shrink butt connectors get on Amazon so I got my heat gun here and shrink these puppies up now normally I do this with heat shrink but I can't find my heat shrink so I'm using the heat shrink butt connectors and I'm gonna wrap an electrical tape it's not beautiful by any means but it works it's almost like the stuff you ghetto rig the most ends up being the stuff that's just fine throughout the trip and the stuff that you spend a lot of time on to make sure it's perfect is what you end up having issues with I've always kind of followed a rule in my life that things you focus on more become a bigger problem in your life. So I try to have as many little things going on as possible in my life instead of just focusing on one big thing. So there's a little life lesson that I've learned so far in my 30 years in this planet. All right, when I talk about you uh, start working on one thing and find 10 other things, well, the fuel pump 
I had to take apart because the positive lead became unscrewed. So I pulled it apart to re-put the nut back in on the inside to come to find out that the O-rings are bad for the fuel pump. So since I'm running out of time, I bought some heavy duty silicone. I'm gonna seal this thing up with, with the original O-rings that are just a little bit frayed. They're not beautiful, but I'm just making, making way with what I got. And uh, I'm gonna order a second fuel or another fuel pump just in case one of these goes bad. It is one of the race fuel pumps. So it is what it is and I'm gonna move forward and deal with it. It's not the perfect fix in the world, but hey, you gotta adapt and overcome. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> So the race fuel pumps are mounted right here on the race fuel tank. Ty made a sick bracket that holds them together. Got this thing mounted. Now I just need to uh, run wire. And the fuel pumps are ready to go. Another thing I did on the fuel pump since they're running off the switch is I got some pigtails and connected them. So for the street pump, we have this connector. And then when I want to switch over to the race fuel pumps i just plug in this same pig this pigtail that meets up with that mail again right out of the out of the switch box so another little thing i'm trying to do to keep it easy I just have an easy connector so just plug and play when we get to the track to switch over the fuel pumps all right so check this out i have the quick releases set up for the race tank and the street tank and it's these quick release valves i'm gonna need two hands to do this so check this out it just this is for the street tank and they're valved on the end and then when i want to go to race i've got my line coming from my race tanks and there you go all right, so I'm going to test the race fuel pumps. I got them completely wired up. Had to redo a bunch of wiring in here. So that's set. Got my pigtail set for the race tank. Gonna turn the battery on. Switch panels on. And this fuel tank button should turn both of them on. Pop the fuse. Okay. All right, Ty just made a great point that I'm gonna know this car the inside and out really well by the time I'm done because I just lifted the car up to uh, install the trans overflow from Motion Raceworks and here's this. And that would explain why the trans brake isn't working because it's not hooked up. Go figure. Just uh, learning the little things about this car but getting it figured out, we're getting closer. And then uh, I almost had the uh, fuel pumps wired up and the fuse blew because I don't have any relays on them. So now I need to get some relays. This is what's left to do with the fuel pumps. We just need to plumb them for outgoing. We need to put a fuel filter in here somewhere or just send it and go no fuel filter, which is kind of the way I'm leaning. And then uh, do the return for the, the, the race pump or no, the race gas. So. Not the driver's seat, will be definitely the last thing, but uh. Okay, so for as for tires for what I'm gonna run, it has brand new Hoosiers. So I'm just gonna find a set of wheels and tires that are streetable so that I can just carry these along, probably put them on the roof and then switch to some street tires and wheels for just in case you run into any rain or something like that and run these slicks. I was hoping to get a set of radials, but I don't even have time to test the car barely so i'm just gonna send it on the hoosiers i mean they're brand new tires we they're proven we know they work uh finished up all the plumbing in the trunk so the water tank's good to go street tank's good to go everything's wired back here and it works and i've tested it and driver's seat is in along with all the race quip harness boom we're freaking there. All right, so I've been working like a madman over the past two days and check out how much we've gotten done. 
I went ahead and did a heat shield on the hot side of the turbo kit because I had to piece together some radiator hose that I got from O'Reilly. So let me go in the back and find a couple that would, I could chop and dice to piece them together. So yesterday I finished up the electrical and the fuel pumps, turned it on and seriously screwed something up. I took apart that pump as you saw, put it back together. And then when I turned that pump on, the entire wire melted from the pump all the way back to the power supply. So one issue I think is either I put it together wrong or I turned it on without any fuel in it. I know it needs fuel to cool the pump as it's running, but look at what it did to this relay. Do I still have it? Here it is. I mean, totally roasted these wires. I don't know, like I said, I'm a novice to this stuff, but uh, you know what? The car is pretty much done. I mean, really the only thing left to do is electrical at this point. I've got the driver's seat mounted. Harnesses are in from race quip. Doing a full walk around. I mean, the car literally is ready to start. The radiator is mounted. I have the fan. We just need to make a shroud for the fan. I plumbed all the vacuum lines for the waste gates. Got all of the fuel lines plumb. It's ready to go. It's ready to start. I just need to finish the electrical. I went to try and start the car and something's not right with my power switch. Everything turns on, but the starter button doesn't work. So I got to I'm, I'm in deep on the wiring and I'm close to figuring it out. It's really not that hard. It looks like a mess because it is a mess right now, but I mean, literally left to, to, to run the line for is the the starter, the radiator power, and mount the fan, and then run the electrical for the two street or race pumps, and that's it. So I am gonna replace this pump since I totally fried it. I'm not gonna try and power them up again until I get fuel in there, but I can't, I don't wanna put fuel in there until the starter works, so I'm gonna shut it down for today and come back and spend a whole day of wiring. Tomorrow is drift night at the Freedom Factory, so I'm pretty pumped about that. I'm not gonna have a car for it, but that's okay. I love being around everybody and seeing everybody enjoy the track. He's put a lot of effort and money into that place, and I'm really proud of him, so it'll be cool to see that. So this is a big update on the car. We've made a lot of moves. I still have yet to run this uh, breather for the passenger side valve cover because we need to re-weld a bung it's too tight over here because the fuel rail clearance isn't big enough to get a dash 1090 degree in. So we're probably gonna move it to over here and then run a line around the intake. So car's done. I mean, it literally is ready to start if I can get my wiring in order. So here's an update on the car. We leave for race week in like five or six days and the, the crunch is on. I mean, I'm gonna make it. I know we're gonna get the car done as far as testing goes maybe hopefully we can go out and test it i mean i'm thinking that it's going to end up just having to be on the street do a tune with uh with garrett on the street and then just send the car to kansas to start race week and then just start making hits right off the bat and just join like the limited club or the 10 second class or you know i i don't know what what class i'm going to join it all kind of depends how tech goes so i hope you guys enjoy this update on the car we're super close Next video, I'm going to start this thing and it's gonna be rowdy. I'm waiting for Garrett and James and Ty so we can all be here. It'll probably be on Monday or Tuesday before we get this thing running, but I'm confident it's gonna work. We've put a lot of time in it. I've been grinding this past week and I hope you guys enjoy this content. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. It really helps the channel and I love putting out content for everybody. So if you're enjoying this, make sure you subscribe, tell your friends about it and come tag along because we are so close to making on race week. I know it's going to be close, but we can freaking do this.